so hi everybody myself i am shekhar today's my presentation is on pin diagram of 8086 so let us discuss it so 8086 is 16 bit processor was released in 1978 by intel so here hmos technology are, are going to be used to design the microprocessor see 9086 29000 transistors are fabricated that is nothing but on a single chip 29000 transistors are fabricated so this 8086 supports 1 mb of memory it supports 20 address lines and 16 data lines 8086 is going to be operated in two modes two modes minimum mode and maximum mode if only single processor is there that is treated as minimum mode more than one processor is there in the system that is going to be treated as maximum mode depending upon the requirement or performance need we are going to choose whether it may be single processor or more than one processor so coming to here the 8086 is going to be operated in three clock rates 3 megahertz set 8 megahertz set sir 5 sorry 5 8 and 10 megahertz set and total it is packaged in a 40 pin dip a dual in line package total it consists of 40 pins and some pins are going to be used in minimum mode and maximum mode and uh, some pins are going to be used in both and let us first discuss about uh, ad not to ad15 so these are address multiplexed sorry address and data multiplexed lines so from these lines so the multiplexed address and data is going to be transmitted to the processor so we are saying that multiplex how this information is going to multiplex that is nothing but on the system bus multiplexed address and data is there so how we are going to demultiplex that one so internally we are having latches so these latches are going to be used to demultiplex the address and data so under the supervision of ale address latch ale so by using this ale the latches are going to be used to demultiplex the address and data generally we are having four clock rates t1 t2 t3 tw and t4 in system bus during t1 address will be available from t to t4 data will be available in bus in system bus address will be available during t1 state and data will be available from t2 to t4 state so that is about the address and data and next next about address and status so in the beginning we discuss we, uh, we discussed that 8086 supports 20 address lines and 16 data lines so as we know that ad not to ad15 the 16 data lines are completed i know a16 to a19 so these are the remaining address lines so these are the remaining address lines and next s3 s4 and s5 s6 are the status lines so coming to here S3 and S4 indicates which segment register is presently accessing. For example, if S4 and S3 are 0, 0, extra segment is using. If S4 and S3 is 0, 1, stack memory is using. 1, 0, code 1, 1 data. So depending upon this one, we can say that which segment register is presently accessing. simply as we know that address and data and address and status during t1 state address will be available and from t2 to t4 state status will be available status means what type of status so status of which segment register is presently accessing next s5 indicates update status of interrupt enable flag after beginning of each clock cycle the status of ie flag is going to be updated in s5 and always s6 is logic level 0 they are not using here next coming to a bhe bus high enable so generally we are having two memory banks odd address memory banks even address memory banks this bhe signal bhe pin is used to access the high 
higher address memory bank that is odd address memory bank and a not is used to access the even address memory bank and next coming to mnrmx as we discussed previously if the logic level is low the processor will be in maximum mode if the logic level is high the processor will be in minimum mode and next read signal <coughs> and one more point the pin is going to be enabled if bar is there so it is going to be activated when the logic level is zero if bar is not there so the pin is going to be activated when the logic level is high here rd is having bar it's nothing but so the read signal is going to be activated when the logic level is low so what happens when read signal is enabled so the processor is going to be perform some read operation with input output devices or memory the same concept repeats for the write when the logic level is low the processor is going to be perform write operation with input output devices or a memory and the next pin is yeah see here a memory or input output so as we know as we discussed previously the processor is performing operations with memory or input output devices this pin number 28 indicates if the pin number 28 logic level is low the processor is performing some operation with input output devices if the logic level is high the processor is performing an operation with memory so the pin number 28 indicates processor is operating so operation with memory or input output devices next data transmit or receive so this indicates the direction whether transmitting or receiving if the pin number 27 logic level is zero so the processor is receiving some information from an external device or memory so transmitting if the logic level is one the processor is transmitting some information to memory or input output devices the next good data enable and ale 26 and 25 so as you know as we discussed previously ad not to ad 15 so multiplexed address and data during t1 state address will be available and the system bus during t2 so from t2 to t4 data will be available yeah the same concept repeats here when dn pin is enabled that indicates that the system but system bus contains valid data only data is available on the system bus when dn is enabled the next ale address latch enabled when ale pin is enabled that indicates that the system bus contains valid address if pin number 26 is enabled the system bus the, inf the system bus information is data if the 25th pin is enabled the system bus information is address that's that's about data enable and ali next interrupt technology so whenever there is an external request whenever there is a request from an external device so the request is accepted by the processor the processor gives an acknowledgement through interrupt technology that the request is accepted next test pin so test in test is examined by wait instruction we are having wait instruction the processor will be in wait state until test input pin goes low simply we can say that if test input is low the test pin is low the processor will be in execution state if the test pin is high the processor will be in wait state so this status is going to be examined by wait instruction the processor will be in wait state ready so ready indicates this an acknowledge from the slow performing devices see the arrow so it is coming from external that the data transfer the operation is completed and they are ready to take some information that they are ready to take for the next action so ready is the ready signal is given by the external devices that their operation is completed and they are ready for something reset as we know everybody reset it starts from the beginning the current activity is going to be terminated and it starts from the beginning next ground as we know ground clock so 
what is the need of clock why we need quiet so this clock provides basic timing for processor operation as well as for bus control activity for controlling for bus control activity and for processor operation we need clock so here an asymmetric square wave with 33 percent due to cycling so that is going to be used and the range of frequencies varied for different versions but we are going to choose 5 8 and 10 megahertz and the supply is 5 volts as we know next interrupts <coughs> i want to give small topic here interrupts what is an interrupt interrupt is nothing but a temporary halting the program or we can say that a request from an external device for processor access for processor access there are two types of interrupts hardware interrupts and software interrupts so the hardware interrupts are the hardware interrupts are received by the processor through two pins nmi and interrupt request all the maskable interrupts are received through interrupt request pin that is pin number 18 and unmaskable interrupts are received through nmi so what is difference between maskable and unmaskable interrupts so some for example an interrupt came through interrupt request pin the processor may accept it or reject it or they can execute it but if an interrupt came from nmi definitely the processor should accept it and execute some emergency situations emergency interrupts for example power failures watch dog timer failures some sensor failures so definitely that should be executed some emergency interrupts are going to be given to nmi and some interrupts some priority level interrupts that are going to be given through interrupt request space then the processor is having some flexibility to receive it or, or to reject it so that is about nmi and interrupt request pins if interrupt request pin is disabled then the processor is not going to be recognize any interrupts so that is about this uh, interrupt request pin as complete a maximum next yeah hold and hlda hold pin hold pin is going to be enabled when there is a request from an external master device so then only then hold pin is going to be enabled so after getting request from an external device the processor is going to be give, the processor allocates the data bus to the external device by giving an acknowledgement through hlda hold acknowledge the same concept repeats for bus request and bus grab so but these pins are going to be used in maximum modes for example when there when there is a request from external device through rq bus request and uh, giving allocation to the external device by gtmr same repeats for gtmr if both requests are came so which one is having the highest priority obviously we can say that gt node is having highest priority next s2 s1 and s0 so these are the status lines which indicates what type of operation is carried out by the processor which type of activity it is performing so whether the processor is performing read operation or write operation with input devices or memory whether the processor is in hold state so that is going to be given in these status lines next qs0 and qs1 so this is this indicate the status of queue actually 8086 supports a 6 bytes prefetched queue so that status is going to be given by using the bytes log so whenever log prefix is attached to any instruction is to any instruction so until the completion of that instruction the data bus will not be allocated to any other device so that is used of log instruction okay guys we completed uh, 40 pins uh, please remember very carefully the most important points as we discussed uh, previously if you having any doubts please put your comments and if you like the video please support me
and please uh, subscribe my channel thank you very much thank you guys thank you very much